researchers, welcome back to our Smart PLS video series for quantitative data analysis. This video channel or video series is targeting PhD students, master students, master degree students, as well as general researchers. In this video number seven, we are discussing or shedding light on something really important, which is the normality or non-normality of the data, the quantitative data we collect for analysis. Okay. The normality of data is really important and when data is not normal there are certain conditions that we have to follow. The normality of the data means that our data is drawn from a normal population in which we will have a normal distribution of the data and a normal standard deviation from the mean. Normal skewness as well as kurtosis. When data is not normal and the sample size does not meet certain conditions, then the researchers may have limited choices. For instance, some academics say that we cannot use, for instance, covariance-based applications for structural equation modeling when we have non-normal data set. So, in this video, number seven, we're going to address univariate, bivariate, and multivariate normality of data. And we are going to link our discussion with the use of smart PLS. It is important to have a good background, good statistical background about the normality of data as you collect your data and process them into applications like Smart PLS for addressing your thesis, hypothesis, or research objectives. Okay, let's move into the computer applications now, into Smart PLS, and see how we can address the normality or check for the univariate and multivariate normality of our data. Okay. Uh, univariate and multivariate normality of data. And this is really important. We have to know, once we get our data collected, we have to check the multivariate and univariate normality. Usually, if you intend to use Smart PLS, which is the focus of our uh, videos, uh, univariate and multivariate normalities of data does not matter. So whether your data, from now I can just make it clear, whether your data is normal or not normal, I mean the distribution of your data around the mean, whether it's normal or not normal, you can still use smart PLS. Okay, so therefore smart PLS, as you know, has been recently used or proved to be usable in uh, many modeling complex uh, sense or structural equation modeling. Okay, the normal data usually is drawn, as I mentioned, from a normal population. And let's see in this chart here in this graph, we can see uh, this is the mean. This is a normal distribution. Usually the normal distribution of a data has a bill shape, takes a bill shape. So as you notice here, the middle 
in the middle that's the mean and we have a number of standard deviation from the mean and they are see the distribution from the mean or the standard deviations from the mean are uh, uh, increasing in increments uh, that are equal so this is a perfectly uh, normal distribution of data okay uh, we have also to know sometimes our data is not uh, is not normal and uh, we may end up having uh, usually once we have a normal data we have a normal kurtosis and when we don't have a, a, no, a normal data we might end up having a leptocortic kurtosis or a platycortic kurtosis as you see here usually the leptocortic kurtosis is ha it has like a sharper tip and this one has a wider tip okay this is for the kurtosis and we check as well for the skewness okay once we have a bell-shaped distribution of data as i as i showed you here a bell shape we will have a perfect skewness as well as a perfect kurtosis however in case of non-normal data we may end up having a a positive skewness or a negative skewness okay as you notice here in this in this uh, uh, graph here we can see like that uh, we have a tail here a long tail to the left side this is a negative skewness okay or we have a a, a long tail to the positive uh, side this is a positive skewness to the right side i mean and this is a positive skewness okay once we don't have a normal distribution of data we end up having either a positive skewness or a negative skewness or we end up having a leptocortic kurtosis a sharper tip or a platycortic kurtosis and this is a wider a wider tip of the of the of the graph that we have okay okay after we shed light on the skewness kurtosis and the normal distribution of data and how they differ from a data normality to data non-normality it's important to differentiate between a univariate analysis a bivariate normality and a multivariate normality usually whenever you got one dependent variable your study focuses on just one variable then you look for the univariate normality of data however when you get two variables you look for the bivariate normality of data and whenever you get more than two variables then you are looking for the multivariate normality or non-normality of data okay how do i check for the normality of data i got my my data as we got in our uh, in our model studying the factors influencing online banking use okay i got data we got the data already set there already collected how do we check for the normality of data so simply to check for the normality of data using smart pls we use the standardized scores for the latent variables in our study let's go to the smart pls here okay to our model in our model we have one two three four five six variables okay so what we have to do in order to check for the normality of data we have to get the standardized scores for these latent variables how do you get the standardized scores very simple very easy as you saw in the prior video we run the pls algorithm okay and these are the results so simply we go into pls algorithms and we go into the tab one two three four five six the sixth tab 
which is the latent variable tab. Okay, we click it. As we click it, and we get the standardized scores for our latent variables. Okay. So going back to the presentation here, we have the standardized scores, and as we get them. If we're checking for the univariate normality, so univariate here, we're taking each construct separate. We have six variables, six latent constructs, taking each construct separate. So we, we, we check for the skewness and the kurtosis for each latent vari uh, variable separately. Okay? Skewness has to be the criterion is between minus one and one, and the kurtosis is 7 plus or minus, okay? This is for the univariate normality. For the multivariate normality, we use the Mardian multivariate analysis. We check for skewness. There has to be as well minus 1 plus 1, and the kurtosis has to be minus 20 plus 20. We got a larger, much larger range here. How do we check for the normality of our data? After we get our latent variables, the standardized scores of our latent variables, simply what we do here, okay, we get them from the smart PLS software, PLS calculations. We go into Excel copy and then paste them into Excel sheet. I prepared this Excel sheet. We simply paste them into Excel sheet right here. Okay, I simply remove the case ID because it's not a variable here. I remove the case ID. We end up with one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, six, uh, uh, six uh, latent constructs. These are the standardized scores for the latent constructs. Okay, I got those. What do I do after? Okay, let me go here to the presentation. I use an online calculator to check for the normality of my data or the non-normality of my data. Okay, simply I use web power multivariate kurtosis. This is the keyword that I use to Google for this calculator. Okay, simply like this. And then I pick up the first link. Okay. I pick up the first link. Let me just zoom in. Univariate and multivariate skewness. I click on this link and then, all right, I have this file already here. Let me save this file, okay? Save it in a place where, okay, where, okay, I have, where you know where it is. You can pick it up, okay? I simply save it. I already saved it, but let me replace this. All right, it's already saved. I know where it is. So simply I go back to the calculator, choose the file, choose the file. This is the file. What type of file is that Excel file? How many uh, constructs do I have? Six, one, two, six, all right? And then do I have any missing data? No, simply calculate, all right? Let's check now, all right? Okay, hmm. Okay, uh, here we have a large uh, set of data, around 1,200 records. It may take a bit of time, but let me, because it doesn't refresh on its own. Let me count till five and then refresh uh, myself. So one, two, three, four, and five. All right, let me refresh. Here we go. Okay, and here's the data. All right. Output of skewness and kurtosis. Let's check now for the normality. We have a sample size of 1190 records, number of variables six, and let's see, univariate skewness is right here. All right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And let's go to the PowerPoint again. And for the univariate, with skewness must be minus plus one and kurtosis. Uh, minus plus seven. Let's go here now on the results. And we have the first construct does not meet the threshold. It's, it's, it's not even close, not even close, not even close, pretty close, not even close at all, pretty close. So skewness criterion is not met. Kurtosis has to be minus plus seven. This is met, this is met, this is met, this is met, this is not met. 
and this is met, all right? So, but still, we have to look for the multivariate skewness and kurtosis because this represents uh, the model overall, okay, or the data overall, uh, which is the more important record that we have to consider or result. The skewness for this, for the multivariate has to be minus one plus one, okay, let's see if it's met. No, it's not met. This is 17, far beyond, okay. And the kurtosis plus or minus 20, it is 83. This is not met at all. All right, so these results would indicate that our data is not normal. We have a non-normality of data, and we can use this, the skewness, the kurtosis, uh, uh, as a justification or the, the standardized scores or skewness and kurtosis of our standardized scores as justifications for the non-normality of data and thus the use of smart PLS as an application to do our uh, study or structural equation model. All right, so Data does not meet the multivariate normality. We end up using smart PLS, okay? Smart PLS does not require the data to be normal. However, other covariance-based software like Amos and other software require data to be normal in order to be used. However, we have to consider that literature is arguing that also other consider, uh, conditions have to be considered like sample size and other conditions. For instance here, Shermela Engel et al. Uh, suggest that the covariance-based uh, uh, same model require uh, normality of data. If the data are to some extent non-normal, then we have to use smart PLS. However, this is not a final conclusion. Some other statistical circumstances have to be considered. And further in conclusion, when the data is not normal, let's simplify. We cannot or we should not be using covariance-based software, okay? Because they will uh, the, the results or the, the statistical analysis would not be valid, especially when you have a small sample size. Okay, covariance-based analysis are more accurate than PLS for sample size of 50 and above when they, you have a larger sample size. However, the data has to be normal. Okay, when the data is not normal and when you have a larger sample size, PLS is the best choice. All right, thank you very much for following up with us in this video number seven. Video number eight is going to discuss the common method bias. Thank you and stay tuned for the coming video. Bye-bye for now.